Hi all! Today we're going to be dyeing some hair extensions, some tape and hair extensions to be exact. And I want to say thank you real quick to Sunny here for sending me their tape and hair extensions for me to try out and review. And this is my first time trying it, so if this is going to be your first time too, you're going to kind of get to see how it's going to be for someone who's never done it before. So hopefully we can do a good job and add some length to this hair. Day. It is a little bit tricky from what I've um, been learning and like I said this is my first time and hopefully it turns out good. Let's take a look at these. Um, don't you love this box? This is so cute. I have the 18 inch in the shade number 60 and these are tape ends. So they have a little weft and a piece of tape where you're going to sandwich your hair in sections what they call brick laying. So all around your head, you're gonna have these small, about one inch long webs with tape and you're gonna sandwich your hair. I'll show you later. You're able to dye these darker, but you're not able to bleach them. They are real human hair. So let's take a look at them. There should be 40 pieces. They gave me two packs and that's about a hundred grams. So they come in this protective net. And so when dyeing these, the dye grabs onto them really, um, quickly and darker since it's not attached to your head. Okay, let's check this out. So right now, if I put these in, it would be way too dark and it's gonna make it obvious that this is not real hair, right? So we're gonna wanna tone these darker so that they'll blend in. And it's going to be right at your chest. And of course you're gonna have to cut them and all that later, but we're gonna wait till they are on my head to do that. Right now we're just gonna dye it. Wow, the really, really lovely color. It's such a pretty color blonde. They have a really cool feature. I've been talking to their customer service representative named Susan, and she's been really great about helping me color match. They have a service where you can take pictures of your hair root to ends, and they will help pick out the correct color for you. If you're interested in getting these hair extensions, I will put in the description box uh, website and you can get them on Amazon as well. And there should be a discount code in there for my subscribers as well. So we are going to be wetting them and you don't want to get the tapes wet from what I understand. Oh, it's really soft. And it looks like it's already um, got like a wave pattern in it, which is really good because my natural hair, when it's naturally dried without blow drying or styling, is kind of wavy. So that's a pro since um, the less you'd use heat on these, the better. I'm gonna be using wax paper, a bowl, a brush, and I have some little clips to hold um, the webs away from the dye just to prevent any leakage. And then gloves, of course, and your toner and developer. Okay, so I'm using 9MB permanent color and the ratio is one to one. And I'm using a seven volume developer, short scoff blonde me. And I'm just gonna start off with a test strand just to make sure it's gonna turn out the right color. If not, we're gonna have to change up this plan. And mind you, I am going to be wetting the hair. I'm gonna take one I'm only going to do a small section so I don't want to ruin it. So I'm just going to mix up a very small amount. Since we're just doing a test strand, we don't want to do the whole tube or it will continue to oxidize. That's a bit too much, honestly. And we're going to want to do a one to one ratio, so equal parts. Slither out the section I want. Okay, we're gonna let this sit. I'm just gonna keep your eyes on it and make sure it doesn't get too dark. 
while this is processing, I'm going to go ahead and rinse out this bowl and mix the bleach and start highlighting and giving myself a money piece just to help the extensions blend into my hair better. And that way, once I mix up all of this toner, I won't have to buy a second one. I'll just use this toner on my highlights to make them blend and do the extensions at the same time. Because it didn't turn out as expected. It turned out much, much too gray. And it just would not match my current color. So I decided to try 9NA, which is what I eventually used. I did low lights in some extensions and a full application on the others. 20 minutes later. This is how the toned ones came out and this is the 9NA toner which is the same as what I used on my hair but my hair is a bit dark yeah a bit darker than the extension so this came out a lot more gray and lighter than my natural hair and I think it can blend in pretty well so what I did was I used my pens to clip in the hair extensions all around my head and I found out that I actually like the non-toned hair in it better and I'll insert pictures so that you can see um, what it looks like so I've decided to go ahead and just install everything but I'm not upset that I did these because this is going to add some dimension and make it blend in with the top better I really love this color so it just ends up kind of like highlights so I think it's gonna work we got our flat iron to melt the glue, pins to section, rat tail comb. We did our research on this, right? And I got a mirror, got a mirror here, mirror there. We're ready for this. A lot of the videos I watch, people use their comb to get the glue stuck on it and then place it. So I'm gonna try that. That's why you don't get the oils from your fingers onto the tapes and ruin them. So the thing is, you got to leave the bottom layer at least a little bit out. I think it's a good idea to put the very first layer, the darker toned extensions. That way this won't be standing in contrast so much with the light light bond. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna section our hair first. So let's do this. All right, y'all, so I'm starting out by just separating all the pieces that I'm preparing to use uh, the darker toned extensions to make it easier on myself so that I can grab them without knocking the other ones over because they do stick together. I did forget to section a parting straight down the middle of the back of my head, which would have been more convenient when trying to stagger them evenly on each side. As it turned out, I just did one big section. So having that chart to remind you where you're laying each piece would be very helpful and next time I definitely plan on doing that. Here I am making a big mistake, much, much too thin sections around my ears and the base of my neck. In hindsight, should have made a bigger, thicker section of hair in those areas if you want to wear your hair up. The sections I took here make it impossible to put your hair up without seeing the tapes. It's a good idea to have your tapes separated and ready to install with the tapes peeled off because this was actually difficult getting the tape covering off holding the section and a comb and that did result in this section being a little bit clumped together. As for placement, I tried two different techniques. The first technique you see here, I am placing the tape under the section and letting the hair fall down and then pressing the hair onto the tape. However, this was my first attempt and it didn't go quite as planned. I was holding the small section too close together, I guess kind of roped 
instead of flat between my fingers and as you can see here that resulted in the hair not being evenly distributed when it fell onto the tape here I am clipping up the excess hair that was not sticking to the tapes. Now I don't recommend closing on this type of section. As I mentioned, this section was very uneven and you can see right here the line is not straight where the section is separated from the part on the top. So I would definitely recommend peeling it back and trying it again. The next technique I used was really a popular one among DIYers. Uh, I was not a big fan of this one, as you'll see why in a minute. Now this one entails putting the tape on top of your section and just allowing the tape to grab whatever it can, pulling it up and then placing your next tape underneath it, underneath that section. The reason I would not use this method again was that you're not in control over what the tape is grabbing onto and in this particular install there were hairs that were coming in at a angle and you could really feel the weight tugging on those hairs my preference would be to be in control over what the tape is grabbing so because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough extensions to fill out my entire head, I decided to make the sections longer lengthwise and go from back to front instead of from bottom to top in the back and then work to, towards the front on the sides. Um, I just found like this would be easier to help determine how much spacing I would need instead of going in a vertical line up the back. The section I'm making here, I did go back and remove because it was much, much too close to the hairline and you could see it if I put my hair up. I did purposely angle this particular spot instead of making it exactly horizontal with the floor because at certain uh, spots of your head it is more rounded and when you're wanting to put your hair up you don't want the extension to be pulling more in some places than others you want the weight to be evenly distributed realizing that I did not leave enough hair at the hairline between the section here is another mistake I made I accidentally put the next set of extensions directly above the previous set instead of staggering them in a brick laying order. So you do not want your extensions to be exactly horizontally above each other. They should be with the corner above the middle of the first extension you installed and increase by one or two as you go up. So there should have been two pieces on each side here. If you can get somebody to help you with the install, that would be a good idea because let me tell you, this was exhausting. To do it for yourself and try and see the back is quite difficult. And I'm somebody who exercises regularly, but my body was very sore after this install. It, it was shocking actually. I do think it is going to be much easier if you have some experience with doing this. I feel like now I'd be able to do it a lot better. Uh, just figuring out for the first time and getting your muscle memory into the sections and getting used to placing them without really being able to see it that well, learning how to see with your fingers, all those things, you know, by the end of this install, I really felt like I had down. So, you know, this was difficult, but I do feel like it will get easier with some time. I am able to put these tapes in pretty high on this side of my head because I did part my hair pretty far to the side. Um, so on this side, they will be covered with hair. On the other side, I put them much lower just to make sure they're not gonna be peeping through. Making sure that you have enough extensions to install originally is a good idea. I was sent these and I only had 100 grams, which for most people, I guess that is going to be enough to fill your hair. Um, 
my particular situation my hair was short and very bluntly cut and my hair is fine but pretty thick so very voluminous um it was a little bit tricky uh thinning out my hair after installing these to make them blend in and look pretty natural so i do recommend getting a few more pieces if your hair is on the thicker side so I would suggest about 150 grams instead of 100 grams. So I had 40 pieces in my two packages of 50 grams each. So maybe get one more package of 50 grams, which would be 20 pieces. Here I am again placing some pieces where I needed to remove them. These were placed too high and there was not enough hair in the section above to cover them. So they were peeping through and they were not difficult to remove at all, which I was pleasantly surprised about. I just used some rubbing alcohol and they came right off. I felt the need to put them up pretty high to help my hair blend in with these extensions since my hair is so short and quite a bit darker than these extensions. I felt it would be easier to blend them the higher they were placed and in the end I ended up moving them down a bit and they worked out very well. So I did do a lot of blending with my thinning shears and my regular shears i did slide cutting which is just pulling your scissor down your hair when cranking it gently removing a very small amount to add some texture and layers i did this on dry hair which is customarily done when using or sorry when cutting extensions because they do not cut quite the same as your regular hair did would on your head <laughs> that makes sense if you're not going to have your extensions installed by a professional at the very least i would suggest getting the your hair cut and blended at professional just because it is quite tricky and takes a lot of practice and you don't want to spend all that money and then just destroy your hair <laughs> So yeah, if, if you can afford it, I know it's super expensive. That's why I do mine at home, but at the very least, just a haircut and that will really pull everything together. Now it might be a good idea for you to get your hair pre-cut before installing everything. Um, as for myself, I decided to wait until I installed because I was not familiar with how I would need to cut it for extensions. This was my first time, as I've said many times in this video. So I decided to install first and then see where I was at and then try to blend from there uh, because I knew I was doing everything DIY. Alright, so it's been a few days since I installed my hair extensions and first thoughts are I actually really like them. They're pretty easy to style, easy to maintain, they're comfortable. I often forget that they're even there and get surprised when I see my own reflection. They blend a lot better after I added a few highlights. I did add a money piece and face framing highlights that helped a lot to blend in with the lighter pieces. Also, initially you cannot see what the final result is going to look like because they have a different um, texture before you wash them. So after your first wash, which you have to wait about 24 hours to do, you can really see what the result is going to look like. And luckily for me, these particular hair extensions, after being wet and dried, they have a very similar wave pattern to my natural wave pattern. So they blend pretty easily just without even styling them. You just sleep in a braid, wake up, brush it out, and it looks pretty good. So that's a big pro for me. One con I'd have to say is if you're using heat tools, I don't think that these hold up very well. I did try to style it with a flat iron and it dried out the extensions pretty severely. 
and it just didn't feel that good. It wasn't very workable. So I do recommend using some really good products. I do use Carotis. This is like an overnight mask one, but it works really good. I use it during the day too before styling. That did help a lot with re-moisturizing your hair. Also an oil and be careful not to get that on the tapes because that is how the tapes are removed are with oil or rubbing alcohol. That brings me to the next pro. When removing these, I did have to remove a few pieces and adjust their placement. So I got to discover that the removal process is actually very easy and not damaging at all. I didn't lose any of my own hair when removing the tape, so that was very reassuring because that was one of the most complained about aspects of tape and hair extension is that once you remove them, people get a lot of hair falling out and that is due to your natural shedding. Since these are in your hair for several weeks or months even, your hair continues to shed, but they're being held in place by the tape. So once you remove the tapes, those hairs that had already been shed are gonna come out on the tape. However, when I removed these, I had just put them in and removing them, nothing came out. So that is quite reassuring. So far, they've held up really well. They've been very comfortable. So I don't have really any complaints other than the heat styling is not optimal, but that's okay for me because I don't generally use heating tools. It's very rare that I do. Um, I have been using this heatless curling, I don't know what you call this, tool. If you sleep in this, you'll come out with some very nice waves. I just left it in for an hour after dampening it this morning just to do this video and it turned out pretty nice. It helps blend everything in a little bit better. Another thing I was concerned about was the possibility of headaches or a sensation of pulling or itching on the scalp. I do have a sensitive scalp, but I haven't experienced any of that. I guess the first night it was a little bit of discomfort just from having something new on my head, but it wasn't anything too severe I couldn't handle and no headaches, nothing like that. Um, you do want to be careful about brushing. You don't want to use something that's going to yank too much. So you have to be pretty gentle. I use a wet brush, something that's very flexible. And this just helps not to pull on it too much. And it's not painful. It doesn't hurt at all. It goes right over the tapes. So there's really no issue there. If you do end up wanting to try these out, I will leave everything I used in the description box as usual. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe if you are interested in getting updates on how these hold up over the next few weeks. Thank you. Bye.